Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to lesson number seventy-one from the Distinction Bound Students textbook. So we have Grade Twelve, Grade Eleven, and Grade Ten. Now, in this lesson, I'll start by revising homework with you, and it was uh, give a comparison between uh, perfect and monopoly, and use price, profit, quantity, and cost. All right, it's quite an easy activity. You can go through this. You pause the video and mark yourself. Now, we are going to discuss revenue. And we have, when we started the, 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 the whole topic, I started by uh, showing you cost and revenue curves. And already you know what TR is, what TC is, and so on. So now we want to draw a curve, and no, not a curve, a graph for economic profits of a monopoly. All right, so to introduce the lesson, these, many of these things we have already been discussing them in previous lessons. And so if you want refreshing, if you want to refresh your mind, because I've mentioned many of these things a couple of times, look here, down on sloping demand curve. The monopoly, this means a monopolist can make a loss if there are little, if there is little or no demand, okay? Many of these things have been discussed in previous lessons. You already know what AR is, what AC is, and so on. Okay. So uh, then in the short run, what are the possibilities? Right, the first possibility in the short run is economic profit. And how does that happen? Okay, let me make sure that I'm selecting the correct pen. Right, this pen is our monopoly. So you whenever you draw your graphs, you must always level them. Yeah? Right, so this here is our price axis, and this is our quantity axis. Right, this here is our D is equal to AR, and here is our MR. You see that? Now, we have our marginal cost curve running there, so this is our MC. Where our MC meets our MR, that's the profit maximizing output. You see that? So let's say 10. Now, many learners make this mistake. When they draw, when they meet the profit maximizing point, they then say this is the price, which is a big, big mistake. So where is our price? Price is determined by demand. So we have to continue with our line. And most, in most cases, this line should be a dotted line. But it's difficult for me to draw it as a dotted line because, you see, it's difficult. So I have to continue my line until I touch the demand curve. And so this becomes the price for whatever it is that the monopoly is producing. So I'll say maybe 8 rand. So 8 rand here is our price. Now the question is, how can a firm make economic profit? And it does that when it's average revenue is greater than its average cost. So when you get more than you, uh, it costs you to make whatever it is that you're making, you make an economic profit. So it means I have to draw a, a, an average cost curve. Now, where do I place that curve? I, I have to place it below the, a, the AR. So our AR is there at eight. So my AC has to be, you know, somewhere below. I can't put it there. I can't put it there because it becomes something else. So I have to draw it anyway below my AC, my AR. So look at my AC. There it is. And this becomes something like maybe a six rand. Okay. Then, so this shaded part here represents my economic profit. So this here is my economic profit. As simple as that. Now, how can we prove that? We use the formula. To get economic profit, we say AR minus AC. So what is my AR? My AR, this one here, is 8 rand. Minus, what is my AC? My AC is 6 rand. So what do I get? I get 2 rand. Remember, I said this number is positive. So whenever you get a positive figure, it's economic profit. So what is economic profit, total economic profit? So to get our total profit, entire profit, we will say 
2 rands times our quantity which is 10 which is 20 so 20 rands is our total economic profit that the firm is making so that is what we are explaining here so you can pause the video and read this but it's the same thing look here d is equals to ar mr our mc curve our ac curve do you see that it's below so this whole portion here is our economic profit so to draw it like this it's even better for you to understand because you can calculate but in this case we have p and p1 so when you when i'm explaining and i'm saying p is greater than p1 it may not make as much sense as 8 is greater than 6. You see that? Alright, so there isn't much in this lesson except for sort of a repetition, but uh, the only thing that's going to change is our AC. Alright, so let me show normal profit. Let's see if it's normal profit. Yes, it is. Alright, so now I'll write Monopoly, just like I said, and I'm drawing my price axis and my quantity axis and I write it in short because yes look it's not as easy as you writing with your pen so when you're writing in an exam with your pen you must always write in full price quantity and this is your zero there right make your demand curve down on sloping D is equal to AR and for you not to forget to level your axis make sure the minute you finish drawing a curve you level it you see d is equal to a r then you draw the next curve m r like that and then you draw your m c m c and it's it means our a m r there so this not there our profit maximizing point is this point here e ne? wow my e is unique so there is my let's say 15 here Okay, let me make it, it's naughty. Okay, let me make it a 20. Oh, and then I proceed, you see, up to there, until I touch the demand curve. Then I make up a price, let's say 10 rents. Now, this is, we can't tell whether the firm is making profit or not at, at, or loss at this point until we draw the AC curve. So I'm going to draw my AC curve and aim to, 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 to make them equal with the AR at the profit maximizing output. You see that? Then I, draw, I, I level my axis AC before I forget. So there's nothing to shade here because our AR is equal to our AC. Let's prove it. Let's try to prove this. So for us to prove it, we have to use the formula AR minus AC. To see whether a firm is making profit or loss. So where is my AR? My AR is 10 rents. And where is my AC? My AC is also 10 rents. So 10 minus 10, it gives us 0. Just like we say the E, perfect. This becomes a normal profit. Whenever you get 0 as your answer, the firm is making economic no more profit. So there we have it. Read this. It's the same as what I was explaining. Right. The next thing is this one here. Economic loss. So this is your economic loss and I'll have to draw it and explain it just like I did the rest. So there is our black pen. Right. So we have our price axis. We have our quantity axis and we have our demand curve down on sloping. D is equal to AR and make try to make it elast, inelastic. Ne? Just try. MR and I promise to explain what I mean by that. I will when the time comes. Ne? That's our MC and this is our profit maximizing output. Let me say 100. I love 100. Ne? Then it means they. Oh, so my curve is going to be difficult to draw because of where I made the meet. Let me. Let me make life easy for myself. Let me do something like this. Yes, MC. Okay. That's 100. Okay, let me make it 10. Yeah, now it's going to be a bit easy to draw. Right, that will be what, what, what? 20 rands. Okay, so this is the same way we started with everything else.
So the only difference comes with the AC curve, right? I want to put it where it's higher than everything else. Okay, so you see there, then we proceed with our profit maximum. So this must be a straight line, straight, and it must be 90 degrees there. You have a ruler in the exam room, so you can't be drawing lines that are not straight in a way. All right, then this is, let's say, 30. Okay, so this whole portion that I'm sharing green, this whole portion here, it represents economic loss. How? Why are we saying this is economic loss? We use the formula AR minus AC. Where is our AR? Our AR, look here, look here. It's 20 minus. Where is our AC? Our AC is 30. So what is 20 minus 30? It gives you negative 10, right? So whenever you get a negative, that's economic loss. All right. So it's the same thing that we did in perfect. So this makes the whole dynamics of perfect and imperfect markets very, very easy. All right. So you have less uh, activity 64. Now this one is going to be easy. You can go back to the first lesson of this dynamics of imperfect markets. You can see how I calculated those and then you can try to do the same here. So uh, it's an activity out of 20, pause the video, complete this, you'll see the answers in the next lesson. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you in that lesson.